Um, and Pietrodactylo, you know that you don't have to speak all in caps. You got my attention. All we ever do. All we ever do is reflect back to people. So in the same way that you know we can't feel too good when people say, thank you so much for showing me this or teaching me this, we also can't feel any responsibility when they say, why did you do this? You're so suck, you're so selfish. Anytime someone is stirred up by things you do, it has almost nothing to do with you. It has something to do with some things in themselves that they have not resolved, and then they project onto you. Byron Katie, when she does the work, there's there's these steps of analyzing your thoughts, and the, and the final one is the turnaround, where you try to figure out what about this thought that's bothering me, what about it is really about me. And, um, you know, not sure, you know, with, with, the, with, with jealousy or anytime somebody is wants you to dim your light or tone things down. When you live or act in a way that is kind of outside the status quo social norm, which generally is fairly being fairly meek and being, you know, living according to a certain dress in a certain way, acting a certain way, you know, picking certain paths in life. And if you go outside of that in any way, whether that is, you know, having a big foofy coconut drink with a umbrella in it because that's what you like, or riding on a fur bike, or picking a job that doesn't, you know, work every day, people who have subconsciously, you know, kind of agreed to the status quo contract get frustrated or wake up. There's only two choices you have when somebody is outside of your worldview. You can either open up your worldview so that there's room for this new activity or behavior, or you can condemn that behavior. And condemning is way easier, way easier to knock something down than to open up and change your whole worldview. When I, it's funny, uh, Dimitri has been building a fleet of pink fur bikes in Venice, and he's really been enjoying inviting people over and going on one, two, three, four bikes in pink fur down the Venice boardwalk. And you'd think on the Venice Boardwalk, it would take, it would not get a, that much attention because there's so much wackiness. Dude, it is, it's a parade, a massive attention-getting craziness parade every time. And it's interesting that he's been really kind of reviving that as a, as a activity and as a passion. Because for, for many years, I would every day go on a ride on my pink fur bike as a one-man parade, as almost kind of an art project, part of living as an artist, because it did this exact process that I'm talking about, where it either, people either went like, oh, all right, you know, it's like, look at that. Who knew that that was even a possibility? That's great. Or they would go and get frustrated, like, wait a minute. I thought we all agreed that we were going to dress a certain way, that we were going to wear hair a certain way, they were going to get to certain type of jobs. We we're going to build our linear career paths. We we're going to buy houses. I, what, what, what the hell are you doing? You're out. You're you broke the rules. And I, I, I. and so some people got really frustrated by it. So I'm not sure of how you ask the question. Like, what should you do, or what can you do? I mean, I think the big thing is just refocusing on what is bringing you joy and happiness. And if something is bringing you joy and happiness and a friend of yours is bothered by that, well, that's that's a that's stretching the definition of friendship, I would say.